Good morning, girls and boys, and welcome to week nine of our art class. And uh, I hope that everybody's doing well at home. And uh, I just wanted to um, go over a few things uh, about our classroom. Even though we're virtual uh, right now and we're not in person uh, together in the classroom, we still have some rules that I would like it if you could please follow. And these are more like, um, how you want to be treated. So even though we're not together in the classroom, think of your new classroom as being in your home, which it is, right? And you're bringing a little bit of me into your home and um, I'm bringing you into my home. So in this classroom, um, we respect. I will respect you, you please respect me too. And that means that you have to respect the people around you in your space. So um, in your house, if you see that someone else, a sibling, a cousin, somebody else is doing work or they're studying or they're trying to be quiet, please be respectful and mindful of uh, their space, okay? And try to be extra quiet or try not to get in the way. Um, it says, stay calm. In this classroom, I will stay calm and please stay calm too. So. If you get frustrated, a little angry, um, something's not going quite right, take a deep breath. And then start again, right? We never quit. We're always very proud of everything that we do. Do we make mistakes? Yeah, we all do. Um, but we don't stop there. We, we try to fix the mistake and move forward, right? So that we can be successful in everything that we do. Um, right here says, listen, listen, I will listen to you. Please listen to me. So if we are actively listening, can we be speaking at the same time? No, nope. can't do that. Our brain can only process one of those at a time, right? In order to be fully able to listen to somebody, we have to be quiet and give them the, the respect and the time and the space to speak. Then when they're done speaking, then it is our turn, right? So we should practice that everywhere. Another rule of the classroom is to be open. I will be open to your ideas and you please be open to my ideas, right? So I give you suggestions and you don't have to take them, right? I always like to give options and choices and sometimes you guys write back to me do I have to do this do I have to make it look like outer space do I have to make this this color and I always say it is your artwork you are the artist um, I suggest this but you may do whatever you like and if you have a different idea you are more than welcome to um, follow through with that right and explore and experiment right because that's what artists do um, work I will work with you you please work with me. Um, in this virtual classroom, it's tricky to try to figure out um, Google Classroom and all the different ways that it works and how to submit your work and attach the files and all that stuff. So we have to be patient and we have to work with one another, right? And eventually we figure it out together. It says, best, I will always do my best. Please do yours, right? So. I am doing my best and I'm proud of what I do and you should always do your best and be proud of what you do. And even if you're not 100% confident about what you're doing or you don't particularly like this project that we're working on or you don't feel that it's um, looking like what you want it to look like, don't quit, don't give up, try it. What's the worst thing that can happen is that you don't like it and that's it, you never look at it again, right? but at least you're trying and you're learning new things. And by making mistakes, that's how we learn. So uh, I'm proud of you. I'm really proud of you for when you do that because uh, it is a hard thing to do. And then right here, that brings us to, um, oh, no matter what the problem is, it will be easier if we work together to figure it out, right? We all work together. We can share ideas and work it out together. And it says, you are all the reason that I am here. I am so grateful to have all of you as my students and I look forward to um, these videos every single week and that when I get the, your work back, I, I am so proud of you to see what you've learned and how you're growing as artists, right? 
And um, right here, this um, sheet right here says mindset matters. It says change your words to change your mind, right? So instead of um, saying I made a mistake, it says tell yourself mistakes help me learn, right? That's very important. Focus on the positive, not the negative. It says I can't do it. I can't do it. If you tell yourself you can't do it, are you going to be able to do it? No, you're not. But if you say, I'm on the right track, right? I kind of get it a little bit, so let me just keep pushing forward, right? Let me be positive. It says, it's good enough. It's good enough. Is it really good enough? If it's not your best work, it's not good enough, boys and girls. It says, instead of saying, it's good enough, is this my best work? That's what it says right here. So if it's not your best, then you haven't done all that you can do. And then you can't truly be proud of yourself or your work, right? So um, these are just a few, uh, a few different ways that you can um, try to train or retrain your brain to be more positive, okay, in everything that we do in life, not just in art class. And that brings me to today. Um, Today's lesson, we are focusing on line, and we have talked a lot, a lot about line. We've talked about the different kinds of lines. Um, for example, we have talked about straight lines. We have talked about zigzag lines, right? Um, we have talked about curved lines, all different kinds of curved lines. Um, and we have talked about the quality of line, how thick or how thin the quality of the line is, right? And all of these are important things to know about the element of line because that's an artist tool. We use line for everything that we do as artists. So um, the other thing about line that I wanted to discuss today is that line is a mark, a little mark that spans the distance between two points. One, two. So here is a point and here is a point and here's the mark and I extend this line and if I pull it across to this second point it becomes a line, right? And I know that we discussed this a little bit earlier on but let's say that I, I want to make a curved line. I take this mark and I extend it and I bring it from one point to another and when I stop, it becomes a curved line, right? That mark is a curved line. It can be a short line or it can be a much longer line. Okay? And then as we use those lines and we come and connect, that's how we create shapes, okay? Whether they're geometric shapes or whether they are biomorphic shapes. Once we bring that line and connect it back to its first point, that encloses that space, creating a shape. Okay, so but what we're gonna do today is we're gonna continue to use line, but we're going to use very short lines. And we're going to take those short, short lines, and we're going to put them very close together in some parts and very separated in other parts. And um, what inspired me to do this piece was you and your reaction to Marvin, my dog. So Marvin, come here, Marv. Come, do you want a treat? Come on. I'm gonna see if he will come over here. I don't think he's going to, but I can show you. He's always around. Say hi, Marv. Who's a good boy? So there's Marvin, boys and girls. And since so many of you thought that he was so cute, um, I thought that you would enjoy maybe um, making a portrait but of a dog. So um, right here I have two examples and I have one of a dog similar to Marvin 
And I have one very, very old example that I made um, a long time ago of a cat. Now, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna begin these, okay, or one of them. Um, and you, you can choose, but uh, I'm going to focus on the dog for this lesson, okay? Because you said that Marvin inspired you guys and that you thought he was really cute, so I thought maybe we'd bring him into our art world. Um, but I just wanted to show you that these pieces were made not by coloring our space, but by using lines, just many, many, many lines. So look, I'm gonna bring this cat really, really close up, and I want you to just notice that every single thing on this paper is made up of a line or a dot. And the reason that I'm showing you that is so that you can see that even the dark areas over here are not colored like we use crayon to color. I just put the lines very, very closely together. And that is why it appears to be so dark. This I did in pen, just a regular pen. And um, this dog I did in marker. And the reason for that is that the marker I can do faster. Um, the tip of the marker is a lot wider than that of a pen, right? Um, the pen point is like a pencil point. It's very, very small. So it takes a lot longer to make all of these lines. It goes a little bit faster if I just use, if I use the marker to show the lines, okay? So I am going to ask everybody to start by just getting a blank piece of paper, any piece of paper, just like we've been using. And so now girls and boys, along with line, the element of line, um, we as artists use many tools, many of our artist tools. So line is one of them. Now shape is what we create with our lines, right? And when we see objects or people or buildings or whatever it is that is within our surroundings, we identify those objects and we break them down into shapes, right? Because that is how we as artists show or convey that message, right, to the viewer. So we're going to start by combining some shapes together and creating our pet or our Marvin, okay? So, or whatever uh, pet you might have if you happen to have a dog. Um, so we're going to take maybe just the size of our fist on the page and trace a circle. Uh, I'm sorry, not a circle, an oval, excuse me. We're going to make an oval with our pencil on our piece of paper. And it does not have to be this dark. I'm only doing it this dark so that you can see it. Um, notice how I'm not putting it vertically, right? I'm not holding it in the direction vertically. I'm putting it on a slant or a, a slight diagonal, okay? And that is because we want the dog to appear as though he's sitting, all right? So we're gonna maybe just trace around your fist so that it is that size, right? We don't want a teeny, teeny, tiny dog because then we won't be able to show the hair or the fur when we add in our lines showing that visual texture, okay? So now right above this oval, we're going to add a circle in whatever space is left. And you just wanna make sure that your circle touches or is connected to your oval, okay? So there's my circle head, here's my oval part of the body. 
Now we, we're gonna need to add another piece of an oval down here for his hind legs and maybe it could look like a letter C, all right? So we're going to come down here and just show somewhat of maybe it looks like a like an oval hiding behind this oval right it looks as though they're overlapping you do overlapping good and it could look like a squished letter c but you see we're connecting shapes and those shapes then will become transformed into an image of an animal which is what we're trying to show um, now we need to add up here in this circle, we need to add a smaller circle. So maybe like this. And notice, I'm not trying to make my lines or my shapes perfect. I'm just kind of sketching it in. Why? Because these lines are not gonna matter. These lines are guidelines and they're either gonna disappear um, by erasing them later after we add marker or crayon or I left my lines here. My guidelines are still visible here, but you can't see them, right? So it doesn't really matter. Um, let's jump back. We have a large circle. We have a smaller circle. We are connecting them to an oval that is on a diagonal. We have an overlapped piece of an oval here. And then we're going to have to add um, a vertical line here which will be one of his front legs and another vertical line somewhere in here within this large oval okay and that's just a guideline so we're we're gonna forget about that in a minute maybe his tail we can make the tail up we can make the tail curl around you can choose um, now we need ears so if you're going to make a dog like Marvin who has floppy ears, then you can do this. You can come up here and make like a like a a triangular shape, right? Like a kind of a triangle but curved. Or if your dog is a different breed of a dog, it's not a mini golden doodle and it has pointy ears. Uh, a German Shepherd, uh, I don't know, um, some other kind of dog, you can point the ears up. Or if you're going to turn this into a cat, because you prefer cats or you have one, you can make the ears pointed upward, okay? But I'm gonna stick with Marvin. So you choose what animal you're going to make, and I will put his floppy triangle ears right there, okay? Now, I need you to double up that vertical line showing his front legs, right? Because we have one single line here. Now we need to double, right, two lines, double it up on this side so that we can show that it is a three-dimensional form, his leg. So I'm going to add another line here and maybe another line within that oval right there, okay? Then we can make like a like an ovalish paw, another curved oval paw right there. Doesn't have to be perfect. The tail, we're gonna put it wherever we want it to go, up like this or down, curled onto the floor. He shouldn't have two though, right? No. I am super proud of you, boys and girls. You're doing a great, great job and this is tough to do. So let's um, jump back in here to his face. And I need you to show me, right in the middle of this circle, show me an upside down triangle. Upside down triangle. Okay. And now jump up inside of this larger circle and very close, like right on top of your small circle, Put two eyes, almost sitting on top of that small circle. Great. Okay, and now we also need a little line, a little vertical line coming off of that 
pointy bottom part of the triangle and then a curved line out and another curved line out and that will indicate or show that this is his mouth. Okay, let's jump back in here and I think we're ready to start. Mm, yeah, we're ready to start with our, with our lines. So now that we have utilized or used all of these different shapes and combined them or connected them, right? We're actually building one shape on top of another to create that illusion of having a, a dog. So now I think I'm going to take this orange. I'm gonna take this orange. I'm gonna make him look similar to this guy. But I wanna show you that we're going to fill in this space in between the oval and the circle. And we're just gonna fill it up with short little lines. Short, short, short little lines okay so now we've used shape now we are going to add line and the reason for adding the line is that the lines are going to create that visual texture right you do visual texture good so that visual texture is what is going to give us the look of having the dog have fur or hair, okay? And be soft and you could feel like you could pet him, right? Okay, so all I'm doing is I am filling up my whole oval with short little lines. And that's it. Now, am I coloring? Those of you who said no, you're correct. I am not coloring. Um, coloring would be this. And when you color and you fill in all of those white spaces, then you don't see the lines. Your lines will disappear. In this piece of artwork, we want the lines to show because that is what is indicating that it's hair, right? Like our hair, like our hair on our eyebrows, let's say, for example. So what I would like you to do is to just very carefully and slowly fill in short little lines. So notice I'm not coloring up, down, up, down. I'm making intentional lines. That means on purpose, I am filling up this space or this shape with short little lines. Does it look like a dog yet? No, not yet, but we're getting closer. And remember, boys and girls, we are not going to finish today. This is only week nine, right? So this is the beginning of our piece, and then next time we will finish it up. So let's see. Okay. So all we want to do is continue to fill up our shapes with these short little lines. And remember, I said that if you, um, if you wanted to use crayons, you could use crayons. If you wanted to use markers, you could use markers. That orange was running out on me, so I picked a different orange. It's a little darker. And it's okay. I'm just gonna continue to make my short little lines and fill up that C. Maybe I'm gonna go back in here, put some lines of this color orange, a little bit darker, on his paws and his legs. And uh, don't worry if you're using marker and crayon together or if you're only using one or the other. Um, if they're a little bit different in color, it's okay because we're, we're showing hair and fur and we have highlights and low lights and you know, so there are different colors within our hair. Now I'm gonna go into the ears. 
I'm basically filling up all of these shapes with little lines. So think of it as coloring using lines, right? And that is pretty much it, boys and girls. That is what you're going to be doing um, to start. And we did a lot. We accomplished a whole lot today. So I just want to review that we're using shape to combine those shapes together to create the look of an animal, or in our case, a dog, or if you wanted to change it up and make it look like a cat, you could. Um, and that's it. And then you're gonna just pick whatever color you like. Um, it can be realistic and be the color of a, a real dog or, or uh, your dog or a neighbor's dog, or it could be completely um, surrealistic which means not real, the opposite of real. And it could be a purple dog. It could be a blue dog, right? Um, it's your piece and you can choose to make it look however you like, okay? But make sure that you have the shapes and that you draw it up. And then I'm excited to see what you come up with, okay? And I am super proud of you. I appreciate you joining me today and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Okay, boys and girls, bye.